Saturday, Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. The Chaz Lanier sweepstakes are heating up. Still not officially been announced that he's returning to college uh, for next season, but a lot of the speculations out there, and now it was announced yesterday, Travis Branham, 24-7 Sports, announced that Chaz Lanier does have visits set up. He has a visit set up to BYU this weekend, and I'll touch upon that one in a minute. Kentucky on Monday, and then uh, to be determined on Tennessee. So you know, how does that fare for Tennessee? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing that there's not a visit set? I guess it depends on how you look at it. But the one thing that's still been the consistent in this whole recruitment is Tennessee on it. The one thing that has not changed has been Tennessee. BYU has got, BYU's been in the picture, I think, a little bit more than given credit. And um, I think as long as you're in this equation right now, you have a shot at him. Um, why BYU? You can probably guess that. It. it starts with three letters. N-I-L. Why is Kentucky deep in this one right now? N-I-L. Let's make no mistake about it. All right? We're not talking history or anything like that. Yes, we all know Kentucky has a greater basketball history than Tennessee. And it's not even close. Current state, Tennessee's a better program. Tennessee has a better coach. Tennessee has more in the NCAA tournament recently. And Tennessee has, it's just, it's a better, more sturdy program in this point in time. You don't have to, I don't need Kentucky fans that, well, what national championships? I don't care right now. All right. We're not looking at that. We look, that's what South Carolina fans this weekend, Tennessee's, Smoking them in baseball. Well, how many national championships do you have? It's been a while since your program's been relevant. Uh, Kentucky basketball, it's making the tournament. It's not doing much more than that right now. They're on a new coach who, to me, is unproven. Didn't even know he's a head coach prior to this year. He came from BYU on it. So here's what I'm looking at when I get down to it. Chaz Lanier, BYU this weekend. Okay. It was reported within the last couple of weeks that he had a Zoom conference with them. So they've been working their way into it. Kentucky, they've been around a couple of weeks. Maryland's one that surprises me when he first, when it was first announced, anything with Chaz Lanier, it was believed Tennessee and Maryland. Maryland's apparently not even in the picture. So if NIL is the final thing and BYU or Kentucky throws some astronomical number at him, I don't know that Tennessee matches. And if that's what it comes down to, he may go somewhere else. Uh, if Tennessee can be competitive with them, the situation that's offered, I, I don't think it's close. I really don't think it's close. Kentucky's bringing in a bunch of transfer guys to their program. How are they going to mesh? Again, you've got an unproven head coach. You say what you, he was, Kentucky's probably at best fifth choice in the coaching search. with We've seen this in football. We saw it with Jeremy Pruitt. We saw it with Butch Jones. We saw it with Derek Dooley and stuff. We know this from football experience. Kentucky just experienced it with basketball. They thought they would pluck another Power Five conference member or coach. They didn't. And um, they went back to a guy. They probably could have still went other routes, and Mark Pope would have still been there for the taking. But um, – Kentucky is trying to give Pope the money and a good squad to start out his first year. I mean, he's had some nice pickups. Let's make no mistake about it. But as far as who is closer to being a national title contender, if you're Chaz Lanier, it's not even close. It's Tennessee. That roster is Chaz Lanier made. It's one spot that needs filled to complete that roster, and it's Chaz Lanier in Knoxville. I don't think that's the case in Lexington. Will he do good wherever he goes? Absolutely. I feel like he will on it. But with Tennessee to be determined, does that mean Kentucky fans are taking this as, well, is Tennessee even still in it? If he does not schedule a visit, yeah, that, that's a concern. But Branham says Tennessee will get a visit. It's just to be determined. Here's where I look at it from Tennessee's standpoint. BYU is going to get the first shot at him. What kind of money? Are we talking here? Kentucky gets the shot on Monday. Neither one of these are overnight visits, by the way. They're both, it seems, they'll be there for the day and then leave. What's the Tennessee visit going to look like 
when's it going to happen? Tennessee's going to get the last visit, barring that nobody else comes into this one. And I'm not aware of any at this point in time, unless a Maryland were to come back into it. Tennessee gets the last visit, or at least they're supposed to. Let's put it that way. Um, Kentucky's hoping they can lock him up on Monday. All right. Let's say they do lock him up on Monday. It's over. All right. It's a, if he gets through that visit uncommitted, he's going to make that Knoxville visit. You would think at some point in time, how long is the visit? What are the details? Rick Barnes and company are going to have that presentation ready for him as to how he will fit, as to how he's that missing piece, as to how they have held out on him. They have been waiting on Chaz Lanier. They have been waiting on him. They know that's that one piece. That's why you're not hearing Tennessee involved with anyone else. It's basically all eggs in this basket. Kentucky's recruiting other players. I don't even know about BYU, what BYU is doing. But um, Kentucky's still after numerous players. All eggs in the Chaz Lanier basket for Tennessee. When he comes to town, i got to think numbers. They're going to know numbers. What's he being offered? What's he going to have to have? If it's something that's, again, astronomical, that it's something that could impact the culture in Knoxville, Chaz Lanier will not be a ball. I think if Tennessee can get it in the ballpark, depending on what the offer is, I mean, you're going to have to, it's going to take some NIL no matter where it goes. Let's make no mistake about it. Okay, he's going, he's going to try to get an NIL. Don't blame him. All right. If Tennessee's competitive and you look at the situations, it was almost one year ago today, a guy by the name of Dalton Connect committed to Tennessee, signed with Tennessee, went to the NBA Combine, was told to come back work on his defense. He came to Knoxville. When that draft happens in June, he's going to be a lottery selection. He's had a pretty good week with his measurables and stuff. All eggs are in the basket. All the cards are on the table for Tennessee in this case. You, you're coming back. Odds are you're probably coming back to work on defense per pro feedback would be my guess on it. When you're the number one efficient offensive player in college basketball, I don't think offense is a problem. Now, how does his offense translate to the pros? We don't know what he's being told on that. But as far as I got to think defense, because he made the uh, comment before going to the G League Combine that he wants to show him his defense. You're coming back for defense. It's a no-brainer. Rick Barnes, is or it's not even arguable. He's one of the best defensive minds in the whole country. It's arguable he is the best. Um, you're coming to a ready-made roster ready to go for you. You're coming to Knoxville, if you were to come to Knoxville, to play for, like I said, one of the best defensive minds in all of college basketball. You just saw a guy like Dalton Connect, similar scenario, came back for one year. Because you weren't getting the invite, you're probably not going to get drafted. Now you see what Dalton Connect did last year or this past season. And now you've saw where or we're getting ready to see here in less than a month's time where Dalton Connect's going to end up. Or, or around a month's time. I can't remember what the exact date of the draft is. We'll see where it goes, guys. It, it Again, if it's NIL, if it's astronomical. He may not be at Tennessee. I still like how this thing's playing out, though. I still like how it's playing out. Tennessee's going to get the last visit. Uh, if he does, who knows? Who knows with all this? Kentucky seems to think they can lock him up on Monday. I don't think they will. I really don't think they will on this. I think Tennessee's been in this one the longest. I think Tennessee's very aware of the situation right now. If he does go somewhere else, they'll pivot. There's still guys in the portal. I mean, he's technically still ranked the 11th best transfer in the portal. He's not ranked the top transfer in the portal based on what I've seen. Tennessee can pivot on it. Don't know if they can find exactly who they're looking for that fits what Chaz Lanier will bring. But i got to think Tennessee has a plan on this one. But I still think when it's all said and done, if Tennessee can get it competitive, I don't know if they can outbid. Or, or that they will. They I, they probably can. I don't know if they will. Because um, around the programs, they are big on culture. And they don't want that to impact the culture. Chaz Lanier, he's got connections to Tennessee staff. He has connections to numerous former balls on this one. He's from Nashville. He was a former 
uh, where he was a former, I think, Mr. Basket or Mr. Basketball finalist in the state. When this is all said and done, I still like the chances that Chaz Lanier will be a Tennessee volunteer. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. Would I bet money on it? Nope. Not at all. Not in the NIL era. I would not bet it on anything. But when it's all said and done, Tennessee, Kentucky, BYU, it seems like, are going to be the three. Tennessee's going to get to last visit. I think they're going to know all they need to know going into that visit. And it's going to be time to put on the full court press, all cards on the table, all eggs in the basket. I'm still predicting when it's all said and done, Chaz and here's the Tennessee Volunteer. I'll be live uh, today at the end of the Tennessee South Carolina baseball game. Tennessee needs Vanderbilt to beat Kentucky today to win a share of the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky clinched their share last night. I've seen people say, well, how's that possible? Tennessee won the series. It, it was going to be the same in basketball if it came down to the stretch and Tennessee was tied with another team at the top of the standings, no matter head-to-head. They, they're co-champs. It happened uh, recently with Florida and Arkansas in bas- or I'm sorry, in baseball. So Tennessee's best case is if they win today and Kentucky loses, they'll be co-champs with Kentucky. They would get the number one seed in the SEC tournament, but there's not a way for them to be outright champions on that. I think this is, and, and you know, really, when it's all said and done, the main goal's goal is Omaha getting that seating, hosting regionals for regional. I like where Tennessee's at. And I hope you'll join me this afternoon on that one. And, um, you know, I'm going to look at some Lady Vols content here in just a few minutes as well. Going to amp the content up. Been a little slow here recently. I'm at, uh, you know, if I'm profession as teacher, I'm at the end of the school year. It's pretty hectic right now, trying to get out what I can, when I can. So I hope you guys have an awesome Saturday. Make sure you like, you share, you subscribe. If you like the content, you want to give a thanks down that right-hand corner at dollar sign. Uh, Always appreciative of any super thanks there as well. But uh, my name's Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel. And last but most certainly not least, go Vols. (laughs) 